Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Wilson, and thanks for joining us this week for a new way to museum. So as a paleontologist, the questions that actually interest me the most and drive my research are about putting together ancient ecosystems, so what's called paleoecology. So that's looking at, at the fossil record and the rock record and the organisms that lived in certain environments and trying to figure out how those organisms interacted with each other as well as with their environment. So one of the things I get to try to figure out is who's eating whom. Sometimes the fossil record makes this really easy on us. So things like our fish within the fish fossil we have here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. So this is an exceptional fossil for so many different reasons. And it's not just the completeness of the fish, but it's also what that fish represents and what it preserves in terms of ecological relationships. So the big fish that you see here is called Xyphactinus. And if you look in the stomach region, Region, you'll see a smaller fish, and that fish is called Gillicus. And so what's really cool about this, and this isn't just a big fish falling on a smaller fish and getting buried together, but we can go in and look at that Gillicus, that smaller fish, and actually see that it's within the rib cage. So there are ribs behind that small fossil smaller fossil and their ribs in front of it. So we know that that Gillicus fish was within the stomach of the larger Cythactinus at the time of death. So give, this gives us really clear and straightforward evidence of some sort of predator-prey relationship where we know Cythactinus was at least trying to eat the Gillicus. Granted, it probably wasn't a very successful predation attempt since the, the Cythactinus seems to have choked and died trying to swallow the the Gillicus, but it still gives this idea of maybe who, who was eating whom. There are other pieces of evidence that we can use to help elucidate or clear up some of these ecological relationships. And one of those is using coprolites or coprolites. And these are fossil feces, so actual fossilized poop from different animals. And we can go and look at those fossilized poop. They don't smell, they're rocks now. Um, and actually look for pieces of possible food items in there, so whether it's fish bones, whether it's pieces of, of crab or lobster, whether it's pieces of, of clam shells. So we can actually see what was being eaten and if we're really lucky, we might even know who was eating it. So one of the hardest things for figuring out with coprolites is who actually pooped that poop. That's something that's a little bit harder to figure out. But again, it's evidence of, of the different size of organisms and the different types of organisms that were maybe eating other things within the ecosystem. Sometimes the fossil record will make it a little bit harder on us and we have to go back to just using um, old-fashioned anatomy. So looking at how an animal is put together. So how the size and the shape of the bones would have fit together. So what that animal would have looked like and then how or what it could have eaten. So we can go back to our Xyphactinus for this. Um, and if we look at the skull of the Xyphactinus, we see these big powerful jaws with these really long and sharp teeth telling us that it's eating you know, big prey items, probably bigger fish. We can also use things like our gut contents to help but then we can also look at how that jaw is put together and you can see it has this really strong lower jaw that actually has this little upturned snout on it and so we actually think that this was a type of fish that would have been an ambush predator from below and we know that again by putting together the shape and the size of the skull and we can compare that to animals living today that look and probably functioned the same and so looking at other fish fossils that we have within um, the fossil record of Kansas, we can start putting together similar relationships. So we can look at the shape and size of the head, how large the mouth would have opened, so maximum prey size, what the teeth looked like, whether they were used for grabbing, whether they were used for ripping, or whether they were used for crushing. So we have a really cool type of shark called Tychotus that would have lived in the same environments as our 
as our Xiphactinus and our Gillicus, but it has these flattened, almost mushroom-shaped teeth that would have been used for crushing shells. And so we know that they weren't going to be used for really ripping like we associate with other sharks or, or, um, or shearing, but again for crushing. So this gives us another ecological relationship, who was eating whom. And this is really cool. So we can start to put together an ecosystem of the different organisms, how they would have interacted with each other and how they would have fit into their physical environment together. And we can do things like take that to the present and compare past ecosystems to the present, what's different, what's similar, how the climate was different, how it was similar and how that could have influenced um, the different ecosystems. And then we can also take that into the future and that's one of the really important parts of paleontology and science in general is kind of this ability to look at the past and predict the future. So all cool things that we get to do as paleontologists that we get to put together these fossil ecosystems, these ancient ecosystems to ask and answer a lot of cool questions. So hopefully you liked this video. Um, if you did, give us a thumbs up. Uh, like us on social media. Please leave us a comment and thank you for joining us this week for another New Way to Museum. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.